Hello and welcome to the Shritecast. My name is Andrew Krauthammel, and today we are going to talk about how to lock down a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. So over some of the last videos I have mentioned how to configure an SSL VPN, how to do a basic site-to-site uh, -site VPN uh, configuration, how to do some advanced VPN configuration with uh, using NAT and other features. So now I'm going to talk uh, for a short video here on how to lock down a site-to-site -site tunnel. So uh, when you create a site-to-site -site VPN, it creates an open connection between your two networks, basically. So if you, uh, in your configuration, specify your local network and then the uh, remote locations network as, as the two uh, objects that you're going to negotiate, uh, if you refer to the other videos, then those networks are going to be completely open and, and connected to each other. Uh, by default, it's just it encrypts anything that goes from one side to the other, and, and that's it. So you have no, no control over that. So if you are uh, on a service provider side, for example, and you, you have a bunch of customers you're connecting to with site-to-site -site VPN tunnels uh, for some reason, and you want them to have access to a server at your location, but, but only one server and only on a certain port, uh, or only t uh, on certain ports to anything in your network or, or something like that, uh, you you, you want to lock that down. You don't you don't want the the all the different networks out there uh, being able to access whatever they want on on your network. That might not be ideal. That might not be what you want. So how you end up doing that is we have to make objects for that. So instead of making network objects, uh, address objects as we've done before for various hosts and networks and and ranges of IPs and whatever else we need for the different zones, uh, we're going to make service objects. So how we do that is we go under Firewall, Service Object, and we have a bunch already pre-made. So remember, if, if, if you want to lock down uh, connections only to VoIP or only to uh, IRC or FTP or something like that, they're already in here for you. But you know, let's just say for, for sake of it, you have a couple uh, custom ports you want to lock down. You go down to the uh, bottom portion here in the Services click add and it looks pretty similar to what we've seen for the address objects. Uh, let's say we have uh, TCP 4010 we're going to put those ports in there click add. Now I'm on the live demo site uh, so if I click add it, it won't save it but we'll create a custom object we might create another custom object for a different port click add, it'll refresh. So you create your custom objects that way for your service objects. So once you have your various service objects, you create a group. So this should be very f uh, familiar for those of you who've looked at the advanced uh, VPN configuration video and some of the others uh, where we talk about this. Uh, you create groups of objects, whatever they might be. They might be network address objects, they might be firewall service objects. Uh, you create groups of objects, each object referencing uh, either a port in this example uh, or uh, a host or network or something else if you're under the network section. So we're going to make a group called My Custom Ports and then in here we would select our custom uh, ports that we added. Usually they'll show up in the bottom here so if you just scroll your way down you should have your custom uh, service objects that you added so you can select those whatever they might be add them over to the right side that puts them into the group and then you just click OK and it makes you a group. So then you'll have a group with a bunch of objects inside just like we see here for one of the built-ins. So how do you go and take that and, and then modify a VPN so that people can only access over the VPN on, on those ports? So how we do that is we go under our access rules. And what you're going to look for is, uh, actually what I should do is go back to VPN. So if we look on this uh, live demo one I have here, uh, we've got three VPNs created and then up and working. So we have three site-to-site -site tunnels. For each of these, if you configure one, and go to advanced, for each of these it will automatically create access rules for the VPNs. 
So for each VPN, it needs to add two rules, one to allow LAN to VPN, because we're talking about zones here on SonicWall. So you have your LAN, which is on the LAN zone, and then you have a VPN, which is hopefully your objects are created correctly, and they're on a VPN zone. So between those two zones, we have to put in access rules. So uh, SonicWall adds them in automatically for you, unless you suppress it with this checkbox. So those access rules will be created uh, from the LAN to VPN zone uh, access rule set and the VPN to LAN access rule set. Uh, and there will be an entry in each of those two uh, matrices, as we'll see, uh, for every VPN that you have created. And then in those VPNs we can do other things. So we have three VPNs, site-to-site -site tunnels here, and so under the firewall access rules we should have six entries three LAN to VPNs and three VPN to LANs to allow the traffic both directions. And if we look here, here they are. Here's the first three. LAN to VPN. These are the three VPN tunnels that were created. And then if we go down and look at VPN to LAN, there's the other direction. So now here's where you get to decide what, what direction of traffic do you want to lock down. So if you are at the main location, uh, as we might be here, we're, we're at the, the main site or the service provider's location or something like that. Uh, from our side to the customers, the LAN to the VPN, uh, up at the top here, we're going to leave the same. We'll, we'll allow any. So if you look here on this column, uh, the service says any. So anything is allowed from our look, uh, from our side, outbound across the VPN. But in return, from the remote locations, the customers, the wherever it might be, the untrusted locations, uh, we might only want to allow certain traffic back. So by default, those are set to any. So we need to go in and change those. If we go in and configure these entries, you'll notice that a bunch of it is grayed out because they were automatically created with the VPN. So you can't change everything on this, but you can change the service. So here, when you select the service, we can now define a group of service objects or a single service object uh, to lock it down to a certain port range or, or series of ports that we want only res uh, traffic on those ports. So let's say in response uh, from the remote locations to the, my main location, I only want uh, FTP. Any any kind of FTP is fine, just any FTP. You're only allowed to do FTP from your location to me. I'm running an FTP server here, for example. That's all you have to do. You select that as your service, and then you just click OK. And you have to do that for each VPN you have. So if you have 50 VPNs, you're going to have to do that for all 50 of them. But that's all there is to configure. If you want to limit your access uh, from this firewall to uh, another network, then we would change it up here from our LAN to the VPN zone. And we can go in and change those. Same way. So from my location out to the customers, maybe I only want to allow uh, echo. So only allow ping. Uh, that's one, one way of doing it. So uh, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you enjoy these videos, please check out andrewcrowdhamel.com. It's a blog that I have. And trachetools.com, which is a managed uh, security provider for small and medium businesses. And I will see you next Wednesday.